Hello and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to show you how I make this Tunisian short row motif. This is about the right size to use for a dishcloth or a kitchen doily. I make these with two colors that contrast so that it's easy to see where the short rows are located. In this motif there are 12 long rows radiating out from the center and all the other rows are short rows. So we work one long row and then one, two, three, four, five short rows in this design. For today's project I'm using Hobby Lobby. I love this cotton, 100% cotton yarn in the colors white and this color unfortunately is discontinued but I think it was called Hot Orchid. It's a lovely purple color. I'm using a 5.0 millimeter US H8 crochet hook and this is a regular size crochet hook. It is not a Tunisian hook. This motif is small enough that I can use a regular hook and get all of the loops from even a long row onto the hook. I have wrapped a couple of rubber bands around the end and I've used a pen holder. I've scooched that on over the rubber bands to give myself a grip and also to keep the loops from falling off the hook. I'm also using a pair of scissors and a yarn needle. I will put information about the written pattern that goes with this demonstration into the description box under this video. So we're starting with color A, which is, this is the purple color, and we're going to start with a slip knot. And we're going to chain four, I'm sorry, chain five. We have 12 spokes or long rows that have to fit into the center ring. So we need to chain five for this pattern. And then I'm joining into a ring by putting a slip stitch into the first chain. And there's the ring. Next we chain 11. There's the 11 chains. So we have a center ring and then 11 chains added to that. Now for this pattern, we are not working into the back bumps of the chain. We're instead working into the back loops of the chain. So insert your hook into the back loop of the next chain from the hook yarn over and pull through and we now have two loops on the hook insert in the next chain three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven, and then we're going to pull up one more loop from the center circle. Now, to return the normal standard return pass of Tunisian crochet is to chain one here and then yarn over and pull through two, repeating that back to the beginning. However, in this pattern we are not going to do that. 
Instead, we are going to yarn over and pull through two loops every single time, including the very first step of the return pass. I'll show you in a minute what's the purpose for doing that. Now when you have two loops remaining on the hook, this is where you're going to introduce the new color. I make a loop with the new color, but I don't put a knot in the yarn. Yarn over and pull through those last two loops. So now I have two tails and I have two working yarns. So what I do is I move the white to the front and the colored yarn, in this case purple, to the back. This is how I keep my yarn balls from twisting. I always move the yarn, the white yarn to the front and the colored yarn to the back. So now to start with the white yarn, I'm getting these other two strands out of the way. The first yarn, or the first uh, strand on the hook, the first loop, counts as the first stitch. So I insert in every vertical bar. Pull up loops, now row one, which is the purple row, is a long row, which is why the very last stitch is located in the circle. However, the next few rows are going to be short rows, and we are not working them into the circle. So, for row two, we pick up a loop in every vertical bar, which should give us 12, I'm sorry, 11 loops on the hook. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11. Now, yarn over and pull through two, all the way back. until there are two loops on the hook. Bring the white forward, pick up the purple from behind, yarn over, and pull through. Now I'm going to move the white back behind since I'm not using it. I'm just getting it out of the way. Okay, so we now have a long row and a short row. And notice at the beginning, or at the left side, of the short row, there's a slanting bar. We never work into the slanting bars. All right, row three, insert and pull up loops in all vertical bars except except the last three. One, two, three. Okay, so I need to pick up two more loops. So I've left the last three vertical bars unworked, and I've got two, four, six, seven loops on my hook. Yarn over, pull through two all the way back. Purple to the back. Bring the white up, yarn over, pull through. Okay. 
Now we've got rows one, two, and three. For row four, we're pulling up loops in all but the last three stitches. So there's one, two, three right there. So I'm going to pull up two loops. Then return by yarning over pulling through two. And since we're already at the end of the row, we change color. So that's a very short row. So now we've got row four, which is the shortest row. And each of these short rows looks to me like going up steps. So it's that's why I call this wedge the ascending wedge. Now we're going to start working longer rows as we come back down the steps. So we're going to pull up loops to make a V of the purple color. So we pull up a loop in the row previously, which is four, and then we go down to this purple row and pull up loops in all except the last one. Then return as usual. And now you can see we have a sharp point. We have a sharp point of the white and we have a sharp point of the purple and we're going to get sharp points on all these V's So now we're ready for one, two, three, four, five, row six. We'll need to pull up vertical, pull up loops in all the vertical bars in the purple color. And all but the last vertical bar, whoops, in the white color. Return pass. White to the front. Bring the purple up from behind. Yarn over. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six rows. And the seventh row will be another long row. So we'll pull up loops in every vertical bar. including all the white vertical bars, and there's another purple vertical bar. And in the circle, you should have 13 loops on the hook. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. I'm sorry, we should have 12 loops on the hook. Yarn over and pull through all, through two, all the way back.
Okay, we've now got our first wedge finished. So we've got row one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now we're going to repeat rows two through seven until we have a total of 12 wedges. Then, but we're not doing the long row on the very last wedge. We're omitting that on the very last repeat because we want to end with a white row so that we can make a seam. All right, I have now completed 12 wedges, counting the long rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And then I repeated the last wedge all except the uh, long row. And I will join this white row to this purple row. So the first thing I do is cut myself plenty of tail for hand stitching the seam. Then using both colors of yarn, I yarn over and pull through and pull all the way out. And I'll save those tails for later. The first thing I deal with, uh, and it works to do this in this particular sequence best, because when it comes time to working the actual seam, uh, there are some things you do to prepare for it so that it, so you have greater success. So the first thing I do is take the white yarn, color B, and thread it into a yarn needle and then turn the piece over so I'm looking at the back and I weave in this tail And you don't have to do this this way. I just think it looks kind of cool. And then I'm going to weave in a different direction. Careful not to pucker the fabric with your tail. Okay, now that tail is woven in, and the next tail we're going to deal with is the original tail of color A. And I weave this through the stitches that go into the center ring, trying not to pierce the actual strands, but to go under the strands, because I'm going to pull on this and gather the center hole into a tighter circle. I'll go around about one and a half times with that tail. Then I've removed the needle and tighten it down. <laughs> Put 
put it back into the needle and finish weaving it in in a different direction. Snip it off. Okay, now let's turn it back to the front. Turn it over again to the front. And the next step is take the white yarn, color B, from the end of the last wedge, thread it into a needle, and I'm going to make some stabilizing stitches all along the the spine of these last of this last row. So I'm one at a time inserting and pulling through the back bumps of this last row. And I'll use this tail as a drawstring to st stabilize these rather wobbly stitches. Now I'll remove the needle bring that white strand back to the back so that I can then accomplish the seam. I'm pulling on this white strand a little bit to line up the what are now horizontal bars with each other. Okay, the last step of the seam, or well, the last strand to deal with, is color A. Put that in the yarn needle. Notice the uh, strand is coming out of the last stitch. What I'm going to do is an invisible join over here to the first stitch of the first row. Oops, my tail got messed up. Insert the needle from front to back under the two strands of the V, pull on it a little, and then go back into the, the last stitch, the first stitch of the last row, where the yarn is coming out of, and uh, make sure that I don't leave an extra V there with the purple yarn. Rather, I need to cinch it down until these two uh, color B and color A stitches are the same as all the other ones where there's no extra stitch created. Then on the back I'll make a stabilizing stitch like that, turn it back to the front, and on the left side of the seam I come up above this horizontal bar of the next stitch. Then I move the needle from top to bottom and pull the yarn through from top to bottom and then I find the corresponding stitch on the other side, insert top to bottom under that horizontal bar. Then I go back into the same place from which the yarn emerges and pull that loop, that joining loop, tightly until it completely disappears and is rather taut. You can't see it because it's um, surrounded by other yarn, but it is taut. Then I continue on with the same procedure, 
down both sides of the seam. Make sure when you pull on that joining strand that you don't pucker the seam. All right, I have joined both sides of the seam most of the way down, but uh, now we're at a place where I need to give you some hints here. Um, I've come up above this strand and then gone under it and pulled up this way, and now I'm ready to find the matching um, horizontal bar on the other side. And you have to be careful and not get this one. That's not it. It's this one here. And you can know that by following the concentric circle around and seeing which one. You can also look at the one, the spike, the V over here, and notice that there are two white bars here but down here, there's only one. So I got these two correctly done over here, and we're now to the one where there's only one white bar. So it's that right there. Now, this is where using that white tail is helpful because it kind of cinches down the uh, white side of the seam. All right, now the next bar is, whoops, <laughs> lost my thread. The next bar is right there top to bottom. Now over here, there's a lot going on here, but it's this is the bar right here. Can you see that we're following the concentric circle around? So top to bottom, go back in where we came out. I lost my needle again. We have one bar left, right there, top to bottom, and over here, follow the circle around, and this is the last one. Okay, we have now made the seam. The seam needs a tiny bit of um, adjusting. You see these bunchy places here. I'm going to pull on the white strand again and see if that helps any. I don't want to pucker it. Okay, we'll deal with those in just a minute. For now, let's weave in this end. You can weave it in any way you want. This is kind of the way I do it.
I'm going to go ahead and weave in this white end and then I'll show you how to make adjustments so that doesn't look quite so junky down there. Here's the seam. These strands here are a little bit bunchy and not quite identical to the others. So you can kind of reach in there and kind of maneuver them around. And on this one that is kind of sticking up there, I'm going to turn this over and pull on some of these strands to see if I can get that loose stuff pulled back here to the back. There, that looks better. I'm going to run down here to the point, pull that one a little bit. There we go. Now it's looking better. There you go. You can also use your needle, kind of shift these white strands over a little bit. Manipulate it to your heart's content, but <clears throat> once you get it, looking at it from afar, where did that seam go? <laughs> you can still see it, but it's just really camouflaged in there. All right, let's put this scalloped border on here. Uh, it doesn't matter where you start. I'm just starting in any purple stitch. I'm pulling up an unknotted strand. Leave that strand back there. I'll use it later. Chain two. Double crochet in the same stitch. I'm using a yarn under for the first stroke of my double crochet. I've discovered that keeps the yarn twisted better so it doesn't split as much. Skip a white stitch, go to the next purple stitch, yarn under, pull through for a slip stitch, start over the same process. Chain two, double crochet in the same stitch, skip the white stitch, go to the purple, slip stitch. Continue that all the way around. All right, I've worked almost all the way around. All right, now we'll cut the yarn. 
pull it out. We're going to do an invisible join here. Thread it through the needle. And I like to come in here behind the two front strands, the V of the first chain we did. Pull it to the back. Go in the same place where the strand is coming out under both of those loops back there. And pull that until it disappears. Flip it over on the back. I'm going to make a knot with these two strands. Not pull it too tight. I don't want to pucker the work. And then another knot. This one I can pull tightly. And then I weave in these two ends. I go at the bottom of the scallops for about four scallops. Lost my needle again. Go back the other direction. Snip it off. Do the same thing over here. And there's the back. This is the seam. And here's the front. You can barely see the seam. Thanks so much for watching. Let's measure this. It's just shy of seven inches, which is a good size for a dishcloth or a kitchen doily. You can put a pretty potted plant or a rosebud in a vase on this, and it would look very beautiful on your kitchen countertop. Thanks again for watching. Please click like and subscribe.